nothing against these drugs. I honestly don't know enough about them to have an informed opinion. But don't we deserve to know when doctors, celebrities, patient advocacy groups are talking about the drugs that they're being paid? Joining me now is Lee Fong, the investigative reporter who published the piece behind Ozempic Media Buzz Undisclosed Drug Maker Money on his substack, LeeFong.com. Lee, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Now, it seems to me that the blame here, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is should be more on the media for not asking the question. No, that, that's right. And I was disappointed when I reached out to every single media outlet that I named in the piece for comment, um, not a single outlet, you know, USA Today, ABC News, and many others uh, got back to me with a, you know, clear explanation here. Uh, a few of the media outlets asked for more information about what, what type of story I was writing, but they ultimately declined to provide a response. You know, in medicine, there is a basic kind of standard of ethics um, Pretty much every medical journal has gone through many controversies and have instituted new standards in the last two decades where if you are a medical professional and you're writing a journal article about a certain drug or about any kind of health topic, there is a minimum level of disclosure, a conflict of interest disclosure that has to be included in those medical journals. But these standards don't apply for the media. Um, so, you know, again, this comes back, as you mentioned, to uh, the media outlets to, to these reporters. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's tough being a journalist. Oftentimes you have sources and experts mm -hmm. trying to conceal their conflicts of interest. But many of these conflicts were available for, to me for, for me to find. Why didn't these media outlets point them out? Now, what, what sparked your interest in this? You know, is there something that made you say there's something fishy going on here? Well, look, I cover a range of topics. Um, healthcare is one of them. I've seen a similar dynamic play out with other blockbuster drugs. Okay. You know, we've seen reporting um, around Roche, uh, you know, lobbying the Bush administration to buy up a billion dollars of Tamiflu back in 2006 um, when the, the scientific evidence didn't really support that kind of mm. demand. Uh, we've seen these reports around Purdue Pharma uh, manipulating the media and patient advocacy groups to coerce uh, doctors to overprescribe Oxycontin and other dangerous opioids. We see a similar dynamic with some of the vaccine debates. And so, so this blockbuster drug, this class of drugs, these GLP drugs, um, interests me. I just started digging into the story. D does your reporting indicate that the drugs are dangerous? I've only got a few minutes. I know that you probably got a 10-minute answer on that. But, but <laughs> what does is, what is your reporting summarize it for us on that? Um, there, I mean, th there are, there's great promise to these drugs. It could be a, a, a real benefit to people struggling with diabetes. For weight loss, there are big questions um, unanswered um, around addiction issues, people who have body image issues, if, or if they have long-term effect. Some people are, are reporting uh, stomach paralysis issues. Um, like any other, any serious medical inter intervention, there are pros and cons. Yeah. Lee Fong, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. That does it for us tonight. Thanks for watching. Banfield starts now. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.